Hey guys, EST here, and it's time for another great gadget review. These right here are 18650 lithium cells that I salvaged from a uh, couple laptop batteries for free, actually. And these are both, I believe, Japanese made. These are Sanyo, kind of low quality cells, and these are actually uh, Panasonic, pretty high quality cells. 2000 milliamp hours, 2250 milliamp hours. Pretty hard to get anything above that without uh, paying for some really good retail ones. But uh, definitely respectable quality, and I believe those are rated for at least 300 cycles, so they're pretty durable little energy storage devices. So don't you wish you could like run your whole life off these, or <laughs> at least in case of a power outage, your cell phone? Well, that's where some sketchy Chinese electronics comes in. We've got this battery bank, which is currently full of 18650 batteries. If it looks kind of familiar, but you're thinking, no, oh, is that like a RAV power or something? I, I, I don't know, I think I've seen that somewhere. Well, you've probably seen it more like this because it comes as a kit. So um, you basically just snap the two together after you put an eight cells in there, and then you've got the uh, control board for charging output and uh, showing the voltage. So I can probably give you the uh, world's quickest feature tour here. You press the uh, power button and it shows you the percentage left on the batteries. And then if you double click it, you get uh, these terrifically not very bright LEDs. Look at that. I mean, that is pretty pathetic. In an absolute pitch black room, I guess this would be a slight help, but, well, I mean, I'm using this for uplighting, so let's, let's, let's compare the two. <laughs> and this runs on one 18650 battery. By the way, this model of flashlight is amazing. It's like $8. Oh, that's right. You get a two for one cheap Chinese electronics review with this one. So uh, double tap the power. That's how you do that. Um, if you were wondering, because it comes with absolutely no instructions and no cables. And no batteries. So, considering that, the price I paid from an American importer is $13 free shipping. I thought, well, that's not bad. Especially for an 8-cell one, I mean, you can find, like, 3 and 4 for a little bit cheaper. But it's hard to buy anything with free shipping for under, like, $10. And I also thought, well, that's kind of respectable. I kind of want it to work. But before I bought it, I couldn't really find a whole lot of solid reviews. So I thought whether it's good or bad, I'm going to review it. So I've been using this for about three months now and I am terribly impressed. If I were to start with the bad, it would be that flashlight is borderline useless. I'm not sure why they even bothered to put that circuit on there. I guess they just had some LEDs laying around in a driver circuit for it. Uh, and then the percentage, it's a little off. So the percentage there, you can see it's 87%. I would say that it's definitely not down 13% right now. The first about eight or 9% from 100 tended to go really, really quickly. And then after that, it seemed accurate. So I don't know, I'm, I'm using used cells and I'm basically using some of these. So they probably don't stay at 4.2 volts very long. So I think that might be what's going on. It might just be my batteries that are the problem. Also, the problem is I can put whatever cells I want in there. So here's a wonderful example. Ultra Fire, completely counterfeit garbage. It weighs almost nothing. And uh, it says it's 3,000 milliamp hours. It is not. I mean, all lithium cells like this are actually banned from eBay and Facebook Marketplace all of a sudden because, shockingly enough, Chinese importers were lying about the lithium battery thing to get them to ship faster. It legitimately doesn't cost any more to ship them with a lithium battery warning on it. They just don't put it on airplanes. So they were putting them on airplanes. They kept getting caught. And now those two platforms were just forced by the government or the postal service to just say, okay, we're not letting anybody sell these now. So you have to go to like a third party website to buy any kind of respectable 18650s now, which is a real shame or just do what I did, you know, steal them out of some laptop batteries or power tool batteries. I think that's where I got these from. So these are garbage ones that you see around. You could probably get them on like Wish or AliExpress or something. They're, they're complete trash. They're probably about 1800 milliamp hours on a good day. And these are the current world record holder for, I think it's most output or it's most output compared to capacity or something like that it's basically just the strongest battery you can buy it's the legendary sony mirata batteries hopefully i'm remembering that correctly it weighs about two to three times more than this cell so yeah but it's uh, capable of 33 amps at 4.2 volts so yes this can output over 100 watts by itself very popular in power walls except that these are like eight or nine dollars a cell so these were zero, I mean, you know, just saying. So I think these are uh, 3,300 milliamp hours or 3,000 flat or something like that. Yeah, they're pretty nuts. So depending upon if I put the low end or the high end ones in there, we're going to get different results as far as the voltmeter and the quality and how quick it drops. So if, if you can't really calibrate that meter for, you know, what batteries are in it because you don't know what they're going to put in there, it's not going to be accurate. But for me, just the top end was inaccurate, and that's it. Now, past about, you know, the 90% mark, I was running two phones off the two outputs. There's actually a one amp and a two amp output. I should probably just show you those. There you go. 
Uh, I can see there's one amp and two amp USB, uh, what is that, just standard tip basically, works with 2.0, 3.0. And then we've got USB-C and USB uh, B-type mini, I believe it's called, uh, for the charging. So I just hook one of those up to my little uh, solar that I got, and there you go. You could also uh, charge it off of a car cigarette lighter uh, adapter too, if you get that to micro B or to C. So pretty nice options. A lot of solar generators, uh, if you have like a Jackery or something like that, they'll have a couple USB port outputs too. So you can just charge up this whole bank and then it makes up for the fact that there isn't a giant solar panel on this, which would cost a lot more. So if you were to get like a really respectable RAV power power bank um, with this kind of capacity, uh, probably about 40, 50 bucks. So if you were to buy some like cheapo, like the like the Blue Raptor, some Ultra Fire batteries and then throw them in here, you could probably get them somewhere for about three, four bucks a piece. So that's still about the same, and then I would just recommend the RAV power, except that you can replace these. So you can keep this running forever, basically, until the circuit board fails. So like if you get a bad cell in like a, a Fremo or RAV power, uh, you know, anything like that, well, you're out of luck unless you feel like cracking it open yourself, which is <laughs> really hard on, on pre-made ones, and then somehow swapping out the cells and I guarantee there, there aren't these nice little, you know, coil terminals, they're probably um, punch soldered. If you're not familiar with punch soldering, they usually take uh, four prongs and basically permanently attach a nickel wire to it. So, not the easiest thing to redo. So, a non-serviceable battery bank versus a serviceable one, I would take this one. Um, I think this is the better value. Now, consider that I got all of these for free. Okay, now we've got a giant battery bank for $13. So if you go to your local recycler, your local, I mean, maybe Batteries Plus, they might have different rules. Um, just an electronics recycling place, a computer repair store, and just say, hey, you got any, you know, dead batteries that you're, you know, waiting to e-waste? I'll take them, or I'll buy them for, you know, two bucks a piece or whatever. You can usually get six of those out of the modern ones. Now, ultra-modern batteries are flat. They're um, usually, like, eight inches long. They're inside of, like, an ultra book. And those are of no use to you. You need the more traditional style, like, removable batteries. And I will say, some newer models from, like, 2016, they're going to only have three of those, but, you know, still. Oh, and if the battery was reported dead, it's almost always the battery's charge controller circuit that died, not the cells. That said, I know for a fact these are degraded because I took them out of my own Dell laptop battery that I had charged quite a lot of times. So now I did find it kind of funny that they actually printed specs on here. So um, it's called the U8, probably because it takes eight units of battery cells. So I don't know why they're saying 5.5 volts there because it's, it's five volts DC on the USB, one amp and two amp. Of course, that's the two on the top there. Older devices can only charge at one amp, which is five watts total, but newer devices can do 10. So it's nice to give the options. Uh, it can also charge at uh, 10 watts itself with the two amps right there. So you can see it says voltage 3.7 volts, and then I guess it has like a step-up coil to 5.5. Uh, really, the batteries full are at 4.2. They're just rated at 3.7. That's the funny thing about 18650 cells. And then I love how they just say the capacity. Well, they don't know what I'm putting in there. I mean, 8 times 2,000 is not 20,000. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, I guess if I filled it up with Sony Miratas, it would actually be above that. So maybe they're just taking an average. But uh, if you look for like model U8 or like 8 18650 bank, you'll probably find this unit. And I mean, I think I've recharged mine probably 10 times already. It never overcharged the batteries, never overheated. Um, and the only issue with it was that the first, like I said, first 10% goes pretty quick. But these are kind of degraded cells, so it's to be expected. So overall, I mean, the flashlight's terrible and uh i will say that the two amp output isn't terribly consistent i didn't have anything to measure it with but i suspect that in some cases it wasn't exactly two amps and that's a very very common complaint about almost any brand of power bank across the board it actually might be that when both are in use it's not two and one it's like one and one but then they could shift it to two if you are only using one that might be the problem but without any kind of diagram manual or specs well I'm just guessing, but the good news at the end of the day is that this thing works. It's actually pretty sturdy too. I mean, the housing is kind of flimsy. I can, I can, you know, bend it a little bit. It's not too sturdy, but then once you get the solid steel in there on the batteries, you can't do anything to this. Now it's certainly not waterproof. There's no, uh, you know, rubber grommet around the outside. But I mean, if I drop this, would I expect it to split open? Not necessarily, maybe on concrete from a high distance, but, uh, it's not bad, it's just not bad construction. Hasn't failed yet, Haven't, hasn't lit a cell on fire yet. 
I seriously doubt that this charge controller is great about degraded, damaged, or like non-matching cells. So I'd be very careful about how I built it. That's why this one has uh, eight Panasonic purples that I very specifically drew all the way down then all the way up with an X-Tar charger. Which, by the way, can also run on USB power, which means it can also run on solar or at least like a really nice solar array that has a USB output. So I I've been pretty pleased with it. I, I would recommend people pick this up if they've got some 18650s lying around, or they just want a cool, cheap project for putting together an 18650 device that just requires you to clip them in. All the soldering and wiring is done for you, and the PCB is already there. And the best thing is, this is something you can use every day. I mean, if you're like me, you're an avid Pokemon Go player, I mean, you could just put this in your pocket, run a cable, and run this for... um. Boy, let me think. What did the benchmark say? I think you could run Pokemon Go on two phones on both outputs for about 40 hours straight on the batteries that I have in there. <laughs> so if you've just got the screen pulled up doing not much on the processor, screen's dimmed a lot, and you're just reading like an ebook, a PDF, you know, some kind of survival guide, a map, um, a first aid thing, a, a like edible plant guide, you could probably realistically run your phone for about a month on one of these. <laughs> and uh, on a solar... I mean, depending upon the solar, it would only take about a day to charge this. Maybe like a little over like 10 hours of direct sunlight if it's a 10 watt capable uh, solar array. So that's not bad. I mean, I, I guess the one big drawback is the, the non-waterproof nature of it. But if you just keep it in your pocket and you don't tend to get wet, great. But if it's raining, oh boy. But uh, there's really nothing stopping you from just putting this in a bag and then putting it in your pocket and then just not using it when it's raining unless you can, you know, get undercover or something. So, considering a Ziploc bag is a couple cents, I'd call that a worthwhile upgrade to make it generally really good for a bug out bag. I will say it is pretty heavy with those cells in there though, but absolutely totally worth it for the sheer energy density versus weight. You cannot beat lithium. So that has been my review of this cheap Chinese power bank um, do-it-yourself kit, I guess. Uh, I do have a solar capable kit coming up in a future video. It does require some soldering, but it's like really really easy soldering so i'm just gonna make a video assembling that and showing you guys how to do it and uh, it, it's basically one of these but with a solar uh panel built in so we're gonna test it uh on a sunny day and see if it works after i get done soldering it oh and if you want to see a really cool project i'm gonna take about six of these and run a stand-up freezer on them for hopefully about a week maybe a little bit longer so it'll be like basically a 15 dollar battery backup for a stand-up freezer I am not kidding. So make sure you subscribe to not miss that video. Thanks for watching this review, and I'll see you guys next time.